Hello and welcome to another update video about Bitcoin. In this video, I want to take a look at Bitcoin's daily chart, short term chart and Bitcoin dominance as well. Uh, we haven't done that for a while. So um, let's take a look at the daily first um, situation here. Unchanged Bitcoin broke, however, in recent days below this uh, trend line on the daily chart that we talked about. Yeah? Bitcoin broke below this trend line. Um, and this trend line is quite significant because it has three touch points. Yeah, so one or two down here, another one that was in January, and then we had a couple here, and it now broke. So I don't know if it's really meaningful, but it's just an interesting observation. That doesn't impact the overall scenario, which is still bullish because Bitcoin is still holding above our main support area. I always say it's best to focus on what is reliable on a chart and this support zone is reliable. It hasn't moved in many, many months and it's defined between 50,700 and 61,800. And I know it takes a lot of patience and I know a lot of people don't have the patience to deal with a multi-month flat correction in the crypto sector but um, Bitcoin hasn't really done anything significant in recent months. We've just been moving sideways. So two scenarios. In one scenario, the larger degree fourth wave already bottomed here on the 1st of May. We're now in the fifth wave of an even larger third wave. Um, then we could get another larger fourth and another larger fifth wave. That could be the bull market top around 125 to 140K um, roughly. Okay, These are moving targets. They will still change depending on the microstructure that we see important to maintain an overall bullish perspective is that the price holds above 50,700 and depending on which support level on the micro let's say on the on the smaller time frames bitcoin can hold um, we can maintain the idea that um, on the first of may a low formed or maybe the way four is still unfolding okay but both are part of the same scenario that's the daily chart. Before we go to Bitcoin dominance, um, what we did again, we offered um, or we posted a question again, you know, for you to let us know on Twitter which coins you want us to analyze or specifically want me to analyze on X on the weekend. There's one video, right, that we are going to publish every Saturday or Sunday on X, specifically on X. You can let us know your favorite coin. Out of all these coins, we will then select the most named ones and you can vote for them later in the week. So feel free to check it out here on X. Let us know, participate. And then uh, yeah, please also make sure that you follow us here on X not to miss out on the additional updates. Now we can take a look at Bitcoin, maybe first Bitcoin dominance. Um, you can see that Bitcoin dominance, even though it's not really any asset that can be traded, you know, and that can really be analyzed with Elliott waves, we can still use the method to identify some tendencies. And I would disregard, first of all, the timeline. I would also disregard where these projections or labels are positioned. That's not reliable. What is important is what we're dealing with right now. And the idea is that we had this decline, which, which I label as a wave one, into the May 21 lows. And this here is now a three wave, and it looks like a flat structure, a three wave corrective structure, uh, which is in resistance. So I'm still watching for a potential move to the downside from here, um, as we had it in 2021. Since then, we've been in this uptrend. Um, okay, first consolidation, then uptrend. And uh, however, we always need the market to confirm it first. At the moment, we are still in the uptrend, even though it's getting choppy even though upside momentum is decreasing, but we're still in a local uptrend. You could call it maybe even consolidation, but certainly no um, confirmation that a top has been struck. The movement to the downside has been in three waves as well, that technically keeps the door open for higher. And the next major resistance level is at 58%. So until we really get at least a break below the last low here at 53.8 cents uh, percent and a break below the trend line, there is no there is no top in place. It's also possible that it is forming just a triangle and not a one, two, one, two to the downside. Could just be a triangle, but it, it's, it would already be enough if we could see Bitcoin dominance drop down to round about the low 40% region, right? I think that is most realistic. So it might just be some kind of a, of a weird triangle and then it might actually go up further. We, we'll see or it goes down, whatever. This is long term. I wouldn't I wouldn't rely on that, but um, also interesting to see these trend lines, okay? Um, but it would already give the altcoins a boost if we could see that Bitcoin dominance come down to 40. And that is still what I expect, right? It just hasn't happened yet. 
Now let's take a look at the one hour chart for Bitcoin or 30 minute chart. Maybe we start on the one hour. And this is uh, the, zoomed out, the zoomed out view where you see this fourth wave which bottomed on the 1st of May. As I said before, based on this, um, we could say, okay, you know, as long as we're holding support at 62,540, it's possible that we're already in the fifth wave breakout to the upside, but it just doesn't have the momentum. So I think this is getting less and less likely, but we're still holding support. So we should not, um, you know, jump to conclusions if there is no objective reason to believe that the fourth wave is still unfolding. But it's, it's a possible, you know, it's plausible. Both scenarios are either that we've already bottomed on the 1st of May or that we are still moving in the way four. There is no, and that's the thing, there hasn't been any impulse to the upside from that 1st of May low. And because there hasn't been any impulse, we cannot really be confident that we've already bottomed on the 1st of May. I highlight it as a potential and I highlight the relevant parameters that really need to be respected to maintain that perspective, but it's not high confidence, okay? So we're tracking that white scenario higher because my view is, you know, as soon as I can count a correction as complete, I, I do it. You know, um, in the worst case, we form another low and then uh, we go up from there. But as soon as I can count it reasonably complete, I'll typically do it. But then I mentioned when along the way, things don't go necessarily according to the ideal structures. And I can tell you that this B wave here, so if we talk about this as a diagonal pattern to the upside, fourth wave bottomed, the fifth wave is a diagonal. Then we have a one, two, and then an A, B. And this B wave is getting very, very extended, very protracted, a bit longer also time-wise uh, than it ideally should be. And then looking really at the micro patterns here, really not or nothing happened today. Um, yesterday was interesting, somewhat interesting. We had a break to the upside here after this third wave bottomed. We could now be in this fourth wave. We could then see another low. That's the expectation. I cannot confirm a low in place yet in this B wave. We might need another low for that. Um, the idea is that, um, yeah, this could have only been an A wave to the upside. This B wave down. And I said to you in the video earlier today, I'd, I'd like to see a more healthy wave for. That's still my view. And as long as we're holding this micro support level at 64,420, I'm going to watch for a larger wave four, which could test the resistance area. Um, if we see a break below 64,420, then I expect we're already moving down directly in wave five. That's the update about Bitcoin. Hope you liked the update. If you did, please hit the like button, leave a comment and subscribe. And if you really like the content, then please check out the channel membership. Also make sure that you follow us on Instagram and Twitter for additional content. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.